Hello, I found myself uh, in a studio with a camera, so I thought I'd take the opportunity, I'm here in Sydney, Australia, to uh, just throw in my, my thoughts and my, what, 20 years of research now uh, into this whole phenomenon that's unfolding as I speak called the, uh, the Occupy movement, came out of uh, Wall Street, of course. And as, it's a great thing, it's, it's fantastic that people are waking up to the point where they're saying, I'm a slave, and I ain't having it anymore. That's the great Rubicon that needs crossing so we can do something about this. The reason I'm just uh, going to put this information out, people make of it what they will, is there's another agenda going on here too. And if the genuine response to this grotesque enslavement of humanity uh, in, in terms of finance and in terms of so many other things is going to be uh, challenged effectively then people need to get streetwise to what this other agenda is and also the fundamentals of what we're dealing with so I'm going to take it in, in stages first of all the fundamentals of what we're dealing with if anything is going to happen that's going to change this tyranny of global banking and global finance then first of all the way that money is created or what passes for money is created has to fundamentally change if this doesn't change nothing's gonna change because the power doesn't move there's no change in the power dynamic of, 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 of money creation because people don't realize this in vast vast numbers that when you ask the question how is money created? Where does money come from? Uh, uh, people, people have this, this kind of feeling, well, well, it's the governments, in it? No. Overwhelmingly, massively overwhelmingly, it is not the governments. It is private banks, which, if you do the research, owned by the same people under different names, the same network under different names. Private banks are creating what we call money out of fresh bloody air and then charging us interest on it and it works like this if you go into a bank and you uh, you borrow fifty thousand dollars what does the bank do does it does it move precious metal anywhere I mean what does it do what it does is it types into your account fifty thousand dollars and from that moment you start paying interest on fifty thousand dollars that has never does not and will never exist fresh air theoretical money called credit this has been allowed to happen because again when you do the research the same networks that control governments and therefore pass legislation to do with banking are the same networks that control the banks and the banking system therefore laws have been passed called fractional reserve lending that allow banks to lend at least, and my goodness it's at least, ten times what they have on deposit. So when you put a dollar in a bank, that bank can now lend nine, ten that it does not have. Fresh air, figures on a screen. Not only that, you borrow fifty thousand dollars from a bank, what does it do? It types into your account fifty thousand dollars. Okay, now you're paying interest on it, but you take ten thousand dollars and you say, I'm going to buy that car, and you give $10,000 to the guy who owns the car to buy the car off him. Now the guy who's received your $10,000 that was created out of nothing in the original 50000 now goes and deposits the ten grand in his own bank. Now that bank can lend ten times the ten grand that was created out of nothing in the first place. This is what's going on. And then if you follow one loan, $50,000 or whatever, you follow that through the banking system and that one loan allows the banking system as a whole to create phenomenal amounts of non-existent money we call credit from that original non-existent credit loan. This is how the banking system, ladies and gentlemen, have taken the world over. Why wouldn't it when they can do that? And there's another little scam here all written in on purpose cold calculated when you go into a bank and you borrow fifty thousand dollars 
the bank creates, even in this theoretical ludicrous way, $50,000. But you're not paying back $50,000, you're paying back $50,000 plus interest. The interest is never created, even as credit, which means a simple fact. At any point in time, coldly calculated, designed to be, there is never anything like enough units of exchange, money, in circulation to pay back all the principal on the debt and all the interest on the outstanding debt. Therefore, people losing their homes, losing their businesses, losing goodness knows what else that they've worked for, is built into the system. Now, when you have a boom, and there's an expansion of this non-existent, ludicrous money called credit, then Peter Pays Paul hides to a large extent the fact that, that, that we're in this situation where the outstanding debt cannot be paid back or even nearly paid back plus interest because there isn't the units exchange to do it. But when you go into a recession or a depression and there is a contraction of those ludicrous units of exchange in circulation, then it becomes blatantly obvious that there's not enough units of exchange to pay back all the interest on the debt and, and all the principal, and that's why you get this explosion, which we've got now, of people losing their homes, losing their businesses, losing their land, their farms, etc. And, and all these tent cities that are appearing around the world. And so, we have a system where the private banks, in the end controlled by the same network, not least uh, uh, around the house of Rothschild and others, the Rockefellers too, in America, have been given this level of power to create money and dictate completely, beyond governments, global finance. And that's why they're able to create booms and busts at will, that's why when they want to create a bust and a depression, which they have now, what do they do? They, they refuse to issue the same amounts of ludicrous credit units of exchange. And, the, and what do we call it? Oh, the banks have got a credit crunch. A credit crunch, what's that? It's suppressing the amount of money in circulation, so by definition creating this uh, situation we're in. The whole money system has been designed from its creation to, it, it, to be a system of human enslavement and human control and human suppression. So first of all, any occupying protests around the world on the agenda has to be the end of private banks being able to create money out of fresh air on a computer screen and charge interest on it. Now here's a question. Why are governments, they're the government after all, don't they make the laws? I, I, I heard somewhere they did. Why are they not creating their own currency interest-free and circulating it interest-free? Therefore, it does the job it's supposed to do, which is to be a unit of exchange to overcome the limitations of barter. Why? I've said it already. Because the same networks that control the banks control the governments. And so the governments do not pass legislation saying, we're, well, what are, we, what are we borrowing fresh air money from the banks for plus interest and, and, and making the people have to pay in taxation all that stuff back? All we've got to do is create our own money interest free. Because you see, at the moment, the very unit of exchange which allows economic activity to happen is created at the very start as a debt by people borrowing money from banks called credit. It's a debt from the start, the very unit of exchange in the world. It's crazy, it's insane. Number two, that has got to go. No more governments, and we need to redefine what we, we, we uh, see as government too, no government borrows money at interest from private banks. Ludicrous. Then there's another thing. Like I say, whether we have a boom or a bust is decided by this very banking system. 
because they have what they call an economic cycle. It's total corruption and total manipulation. First of all, they put lots of units of exchange out, credit, oh, you know, you earn two and six a week, okay, have this offer a million pounds house. Yes, here's the money, take it. And they put lots of units of exchange in circulation. And there's a boom, manufactured, and when people are in a boom and they get confident about their jobs, they go into more debt, uh, bigger house, uh, a bigger car, all the rest of it. And then what they do at an optimum point, this is what they did in 2008, is they take or create an excuse to take money out of circulation. Now the economic activity generated by that amount of money in circulation is no longer possible. And we move over here, fishing line coming in now, to a depression or a slump. People do not lose their homes over overwhelmingly because they don't want to work anymore. They lose their homes because there's not enough economic activity to generate the income to pay the mortgage. Um, companies don't go bust because they think it would be a bit of fun. They go through a, a bust because there's not enough demand for their products at a time of a, uh, a downturn when the money in circulation is being reduced. And what happens? The banks that have created this problem in the first place, they take the homes, they take the businesses, they take the land, they take the real wealth for having not been paid back money that has not does not and will never exist. This is the power that the governments, controlled by the same network, have given to the banks to control planet Earth. Anything that comes out of these occupied protests that does not include demands, not taking no for an answer, this has got to go, it's going to change nothing. And there's another couple of, of things, maybe a few more, that I'd like to get across to those that are brilliantly protesting around the world. Because there's nothing more manipulatable than genuineness that isn't streetwise. And what we need to do, if we're going to really uh, bring an end to this outrageous, inhuman nonsense, is we have to get streetwise pretty damn quick. Because there are people, vultures, flying around, flitting around these protests, not least in Wall Street, trying to direct it in a certain direction that will make the world more enslaved and more unjust than it is now. There's certain coordinates, uh, three will do in this, uh, in this presentation, if you like. One, where does this network behind the banking system and behind governments and behind the transnational corporations, where does it want to take us, okay? Well, simple. It wants total control over the entire human race, mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, and uh, financially. And to do that, and there's a few, compared with the 7 billion global population, there are a handful of people at the core of this in full knowledge of what they're doing. They have to constantly centralize decision making. Because the more you centralize decision making, the more power the few have over even greater people, numbers of people. The other thing that goes on is the more you centralize power, the more power you have centrally to centralize even quicker. So the, 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 uh, the process of centralization of power has been given a word now for, for a long time called globalization. Um, this can move quicker and quicker and quicker through this process of centralized power, more power to centralize even quicker. What they want to create, I've been writing about this now for nearly 20 years, is they want a world government that would dictate all uh, laws, uh, apart from a few local things, all the major laws would be dictated by this uh, world government, just as the European Union dictatorship now dictates something like 75% of the laws that, 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 that are passed in Britain. Um, 
they want a world government then that would dictate to everybody on the planet. They want a world central bank that would dictate all global finance to every what is now countries, though they want to break them up into regions. Um, they want a world army to impose the will of the world government on anyone that doesn't want to accept it. That's what NATO is now. You know you, when, when they're justifying bombing whole cities of civilians on the pretext of protecting civilians, um, and they say, the world community has decided, we have GH, and the international, that's code for world government. And when they then say, we're going to bring NATO in because the world community has decided, no, actually, America, Britain, France, and one or two others have bloody decided, and Israel. Um, they are talking about NATO as a world army. The idea of this structure, where they want to take us, is to have a world government that says, these people, or this group, or this, what is now a country, is not accepting our diktats, send the boys in. And that's what we've seen in Libya. That's what they're trying to bring in in Syria. That's what we're seeing increasingly around the world. The international community has decided, send the boys in. NATO, de facto world army. International community, G8, de facto world government. We're seeing it being moved into place. They want a world single electronic currency that would replace all other currencies. No more cash. So now you go into a, a shop or something, you hand over electronic money, a credit card. The computer says, no, won't accept your card. You least now still, although it's going out of circulation at an extraordinary rate, you can see, so, still say, OK, I'll pay cash. What about when there's no cash and that computer says no to your credit card or your uh, microchip as it's designed to be eventually. That's deciding if you purchase or not. It's all about control. And so they want this world currency and that's what we're seeing in Europe now. People say, oh, the euro's not working, look. No, it's not. You know why? Because it's not supposed to work. It's just a stepping stone. You had all those uh, currencies in Europe in Italy, in France, and all these different currencies. They, had, they wanted on the process of getting to this world currency um, to get rid of them. So they replaced them all, nearly all of them anyway, with the euro. Now all those currencies in one fell swoop gone. Now we're down to one in Europe, uh, in most countries, the euro. So now what do they do? They want to make the euro not work as the next stage of uh, getting more and more into this towards this one world currency. So, another thing to mark the card for anyone involved in these Occupy protests, if any uh, suggestion comes along that we should go to some form of world government or, some, or, or, or to, and they're even talking about it now, to a world central bank and all this stuff, no, no, no. Listen, it's centralization of power in this world that has got us into this mess. If you have diversity of decision making, that there's so many points of decision making, no cabal at the center can dictate that or manipulate that on anything like the scale that it can when you have centralization of power. So we've got the European Union, we've got the, uh, which is a, a fascist dictatorship or communist dictatorship, whichever we want, we want to call it. We've got this single currency and all the rest of it, all this economic disaster in Europe, all manipulated on purpose, as it is in America and elsewhere. And I'm seeing people say, well, the answer to all the problems caused by this constant centralization of power, we need more centralization of power. Let's go to a world level now. And yet, as I've shown in my books for 20 years, this is exactly what the plan has been all along. And if we're not very, very careful, Many of the Occupy protesters are going to be manipulated, unless they get streetwise about the game and how it's played, they are going to get manipulated into accepting, even demanding, a solution to a problem that is going to make the problem even worse and the enslavement of humanity even more extreme.
when, um, when you look at where they want to take us, which is into this centralized global dictatorship, then you look at the main technique that they used to take us there. Uh, I gave it a name a long time ago now. Problem, reaction, solution. Dead simple, devastating. At stage one, you create a problem. You blame someone or something else for it to hide the fact that you're really behind it. You then, through an unquestioning and pathetic media, tell the people the version of the problem you want them to believe. What you want at stage two is the reaction to the problem from the people. Fear, outrage, something must be done. It could be a war, it could be a terrorist attack, uh, like the um, Mossad uh, American intelligence operation known as 9-11. It could be um, uh, an economic collapse, whatever. Whatever problem you need to be allowed you to go to stage three of problem reaction solution which is to offer the solutions to the problems you have covertly created and blame someone or something else for it and those solutions are constantly advancing your agenda to this centralized global dictatorship that I'm talking about so when you crash the global economy and when you're moving trillions and trillions of dollars around the world economy every day as the, this network is you decide if it goes up or down nobody else does does you do and therefore um, you can create an economic collapse at will that's what they did in 2008 and they've gone on with it since and the idea is that that problem is then offered a solution and people like the Rothschild controlled bagman and billionaire George Soros one of the major funders by the way into existence of moveon.org which is trying to move in this democratic party owned cabal owned operation moving in on the Wall Street protests and stuff like that um, you can then offer the solutions that Soros is and others are offering, which are what? To solve this economic global crash, we need a world central bank. Stands back in amazement. I'm shocked. Knock me down with a feather and I shall swoon. It's so blatant. It's so callable. It's an open book once you do the research and you realize where this is going. And so, it's so vital as we've reached this point, this cusp where so many people have, have gone through or are going through this process now where they're saying, I'm a slave and I'm not having it. And then they go to the next stage, which is what we're starting to see. It's so important that they don't allow themselves to be pawns, genuine pawns, unknowing pawns, but pawns all the same in a manipulation that then takes us on to the next stage of an even greater financial and human enslavement than we've had up to this point. Because this is, this is a, a vital area. It's, 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 it's vital not to get focused and obsessed with corporations and banks and all that stuff. It's about control. It's about human control. And the form it takes doesn't matter to these people. It, they just want the form that brings most control. Now, in the process of doing this, they've reached a point where the, 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 the control has been going on through a banking system, private banking system, controlled by these uh, families and their networks, and through corporations controlled by the same families and these networks. I mean, I keep see, seeing people say, we must have an end to capitalism. We don't have capitalism. We have cartelism. It's like J.D. Rockefeller said, competition is a sin. We have an oil cartel, a pharmaceutical cartel, a biotech cartel, on and on it goes. And these are the cartels of these families. This is how they control and dictate at this point. But they want to go to the, to the ultimate level of human control where they don't have corporations, we know them anymore. And, and so if, if we can get caught in, yeah, get rid of the corporations. I'm all for that. 
But the question is, to be replaced by what? And this is the structure they want. They want the world government, the world central bank, the world currency, the world army to implement the will of the world government, and then they want the world government ministries. Read 1984.